All right. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hope everyone's doing good. Um, all right. So today um, we got a lot of information to cover uh, for chapter four. So the plan is uh, I'm going to go over the information today. Um, Friday, I'm going to go through um, the first half of the hands-on activities with you guys. Uh, I'll do that on Friday. So you'll want to zoom in or uh, be in campus in the classroom for that one. And then um, next Monday, um, I'll, we'll finish up uh, chapter four, um, just because there's no hands-on activities or case studies for chapter five. Okay, so uh, next week will be, be a little bit different. Uh, but then your uh, case study and the hands-on activities for chapter four uh, won't be due until next Friday or uh, end of next week, okay? So uh, that's kind of the plan. Um, I graded um, all the chapter two um, assignments that were turned in. Uh, everybody uh, that turned those in did a really good job. Uh, you're getting the, um, seems like everybody's uh, grasping uh, the, uh, all of the uh, ideas there. And so uh, if you're still working on chapter three uh, case study, um, just get that turned in this week and we'll get feedback on that one this, uh, later this week as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. <clears throat> okay. All right, so uh, this week we're gonna talk about uh, visual elements and graphics, okay? so how to work with photos and graphics and doing some other um, type of design uh, strategies for uh, web layout um, and CSS. All right, so we're gonna uh, look at creating and formatting lines and borders. Um, we're gonna work with uh, applying uh, image elements uh, to add graphics and photos to our pages. Um, we'll, talk, we'll talk about optimizing images for web pages, uh, backgrounds, um, adding uh, hyperlinks to images. Uh, well, then we'll work with some CSS um, to do some different types of effects as far as like rounded corners, um, shadows, opacity, gradients, uh, some things like that. Uh, then we'll also get into some color, um, <clears throat> some other color tricks with uh, CSS. Uh, we can add alpha channels uh, to color. Um, we'll do some other, some, we'll do some basic HTML5 um, uh, tricks here for um, adding some other types of elements to your pages. And then we'll just uh, follow up with some, some uh, additional information on uh, graphics and uh, some guidelines. All right, so uh, first one here, um, so you'll, you'll see these used quite a bit um, in web design. Um, it's the uh, horizontal rule element, okay? So basically it's just um, adding a, a line to help break up information or break up different sections of your page, all right? Um, to do this, you just type in a code. There's just a simple tag of HR, all right? So opening and closing, um, little uh, bracket there of HR, okay? So uh, you put that in and it'll add a, a, a line, a horizontal rule to the page. Now each uh, browser might look a little different um, as far as the horizontal rule. Uh, Firefox might look a little different than Chrome or uh, Safari. So just kind of keep that in mind. All right, uh, we can do CSS borders. Okay, so we can configure borders on the top, right, bottom, um, left sides of, of uh, an element. Okay, so when we do this in the CSS, um, we're adding three different values here. Uh, we're doing the border width, uh, we're doing the border style, and the border color. All right, so when you add this in your, uh, in your uh, CSS, uh, you'll see the first section there, um, right after the first curly bracket, uh, we have border colon 2px. Okay, so that's gonna give us a border width of two pixels. Uh, then we have a space, <clears throat> and then we uh, type solid. So that's gonna give us the, the border style. So we can do like solid, uh, dotted. Uh, there's lots of different uh, options there. 
Um, and then the last one is our color value for that border, right? So we'll just put in a, a hexadecimal value, uh, whatever you want it to be there. Uh, the example here is just a red solid uh, two pixel border, okay? Um, so we can do uh, with these borders, uh, block and inline elements. Okay, when we, when we talk about a block display element, um, that's basically the, the default width of the element uh, contents that extend all the way to the edge of the browser, uh, the, the, the margin of the browser. All right, um, when we talk about an inline display element, um, that border just outlines the element as close as it, as, as it can, okay? So example here would be like an H2. Um, so that top section there says heading with border. Uh, in the CSS, we put border two pixel solid red. And then the second one there is for that anchor uh, element. So the, the link, okay, we're giving it the same values. Um, but you notice that that border just uh, surrounds just that link text. Okay, it doesn't go all the way to the edge. Um, that, so usually you wouldn't put a border around a link or anything like that. Uh, but this just kind of explains how that would work with inline versus block. Uh, so like kind of what I said with the horizontal rules, uh, the borders might look a little different um, for each browser. Okay, so this is an example of what they would look like on Firefox. Um, so these might look a little different in uh, Chrome, Safari, or uh, Microsoft Edge, or Internet Explorer. Okay, so uh, just to, they're they're gonna look pretty close, uh, but they might just there might just be a little bit of difference. <clears throat> All right, so um, we can also uh, configure the specific sides of a border. Okay, so we can make the top different than the bottom, uh, the right look different than the left, uh, and so on. All right, so to do that um, again, there in the CSS. Um, so the example here, we're, we're adding a border to the bottom of that H2 header. Okay, so to do that uh, within the CSS uh, properties and the values there, uh, we just use border hyphen bottom and two pixel. All right, so if we just type border two pixel, it's gonna put that around all four sides. Uh, if we specify just border bottom, um, it's gonna do uh, just the pixel there. And you can add multiple um, properties. So if like we wanted to have a border on just the top and the bottom, uh, we could also add in uh, border top uh, and give it a value as well. All right, so something else that we <clears throat> you'll do quite a bit is to add what we call padding uh, around different elements um, and different contents within the, the page. Uh, so that basically is just giving it some space around whatever uh, element that is. All right, so the example there, um, the H2, again, we're doing that red uh, solid border, uh, but we're also adding in another um, uh, property here uh, with, with uh, the padding, okay? So the only thing you need to kind of really pay attention to here is, um, with that border, and then we have the colon and those three va uh, values for that border, um, you need to add uh, a semicolon um, after the hexadecimal value there, and then start your padding and tell it um, what the value of that padding is. So for this example, we're doing five pixels um, of padding around the top, bottom, left, and right of, of that uh, H2 element, okay? So you can see there, if we don't have the padding, it's gonna butt up right against um, some of that text pretty close. All right, so, and again, we can do uh, padding on, we can make that padding uh, different on uh, all four sides of the element. All right, so again, same with border, we just add like a hyphen, uh, bottom left, right, or top. All right, so the, the code there on the left, on the bottom, we're coding an H2 uh, with some uh, padding. All right, so we start out with our border, uh, give it the values there, semicolon. Uh, we're also telling it to add a background color. Okay, so we're gonna put in a gray background color and then another semicolon. 
And then we want five pixels of padding on the left side. Uh, we want 10 pixels of padding on the bottom and 10 pixels of padding on the top. Okay, so we just put in um, all those different uh, values there uh, within that style. Um, okay, so here we're gonna talk about, you can shorthand uh, some of this. Um, so in regards to like the padding, um, we can use two numeric values or percentages, right? So if we look there on the left at the bottom example of code, uh, we have padding colon 20 px space 10 px all right um, the first value configures the top and bottom okay so it's going to be about 20 pixels of padding on the top and 20 pixels of padding on the bottom and then that second value uh, configures the left and the right okay so it's going to add 10 pixels to the left and uh, 10 pixels to the right all right, so, and you'll notice the, the border goes all the way to the right side of the browser. Uh, that's just because we're, um, we're, we're not doing inline, okay? We're, we're doing a block. All right, so we can even um, shorthand uh, different percentages or values for all four sides of the padding. Okay, so you'll see example there, we have padding colon 30px space 10px space 5px. Uh, space 20px, right? Um, so the only thing you have to remember here is just um, the order that this goes in. Uh, it starts at the top, goes to the right, then goes to the bottom, and then to the left. So if you just think about a clock, um, if we just start at midnight, okay, so at the top, and then just go uh, clockwise uh, to the right, bottom, and then left. Okay, so that's going to put 30 pixels on the top, 10 pixels on the right, five pixels on the bottom and then 20 pixels on the left. Okay, so you can custom customize um, these padding values um, to any element, all right? So a lot of customization there to work with. Okay, uh, let's talk about some, some types of graphics uh, that we're gonna use <clears throat> on web pages. Um, so these are, three commonly used ones. Um, first one's a GIF or GIF, however you'd like to pronounce it. Um, uh, the one setback to a GIF is uh, it doesn't have as many color values um, uh, within that uh, graphic element. Uh, it's usually only, uh, it's constrained to about 256 colors. Uh, you can animate those, uh, which is kind of neat. So you can have some, you can have the animated uh, GIFs. Uh, the second one there is a JPEG. Okay, so it's uh, .jpg. Uh, JPEGs are really common for photos and different types of uh, graphics like that. Uh, GIFs are used more for like uh, simple graphics, like simple shapes or logos, uh, things like that. Um, the uh, JPEG is, uh, uses a lot more color value. And then the, the last one there is uh, more commonly used now um, within the last five to 10 years, and that's a PNG file. Um, the nice thing about a PNG file is it retains all those high color values that a JPEG does, uh, but you can also add in transparency. Okay, so like if you add a logo or something and you want uh, the logo to kind of be cut out and put on a, the background of your web page uh, without any uh, edges showing. Um, you can do that through the transparency uh, alpha channels that are built in through a PNG. Okay, uh, the only drawback is the PNG file sizes are a little bit uh, higher than a JPEG or GIF. All right, so we kind of talked about this. The GIF stands for Graphics Interchange uh, Format. Um, 256 colors. Uh, it can be transparent as well. Uh, so one of those colors can be configured as a transparent uh, alpha channel. Um, and then I mentioned the, the animated part of it. Uh, JPEG uh, stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group. Uh, like I said, it can, so instead of 256 colors, now we have uh, access to 16.7 million colors. All right, so um, the only thing to keep in mind there, uh, the more colors you have and um, the, 
the less you compress that uh, JPEG file, the higher the file size is gonna be. Okay, so there's kind of a, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit here uh, down the road. We'll talk about um, how to optimize some of these photos. Um, it, it can't, it cannot be uh, animated or made transparent. Um, and then the PNG, portable gra uh, network graphic. Uh, again, sports millions of colors, just like the JPEG, uh, and also has multiple levels of transparency. Um, so the only drawback of, when I say multiple levels of transparency, um, most browsers still only limit that to just one uh, transparent color, okay? But as we go down the road here in a couple of years, two or three years, um, most browsers as they update uh, will probably add more support for more transparency levels. Um, okay. All right, so when we want to place uh, a photo uh, or one of these graphic elements uh, into our web page, uh, this is the, the basic code here to do that. Okay, that line across there. Uh, we start out uh, just a normal tag like we do, uh, and then we use IMG space SRC equals, and then in parentheses, uh, what we're gonna tell that is the file name that we want to pull up. Okay, so the example here is this little picture of the dog. Um, so we're telling it we want it to find dog.jpg, okay, so that JPEG. The other thing, um, so the source attribute, that's the name of the, the file name of the graphic. Uh, the next one is our alt attribute. Uh, so this is something you always want to include uh, just for accessibility and uh, standards for web. We want to give a description of that photo. Okay, so just a short, you know, uh, I'd say two to five word description. Um, this one is dog at computer. All right, so we call this the alt text. And uh, the next one there, uh, we give it the height and then we give it the width. Okay, and so uh, these are all done in pixels. Okay, so the height equals 100 pixels and then the width equals 100 pixels as well. So it's just a square, all right? So, um, and in that value there, you can, you can include PX after the 100 um, or you don't have to put it in there. Uh, by default, it knows that uh, we're talking about pixels. All right, so when we talked about accessibility and images there, um, we always need to include that alt text. Okay, so just a really short description of what that image is. Um, if, uh, if you're using images for navigation on your site, uh, we just also need to include that alt text to provide a simple um, description. So if it's like home, about, contact us, whatever it might be, include that uh, alt uh, text there. Um, but also it's a good practice to provide just simple text links at the bottom of the page, if you can. All right. Um, so like I said, sometimes we might want to have an image that's uh, clickable. So you can click on that image and it uh, takes you somewhere. Uh, to do this, we start out um, with our first uh, tag there our opening uh, anchor element tag. So we have our a href equals uh, index.html. Okay, so this example here, we have like a navigational uh, button uh, that we've set up to take you to the home page. Okay, so that's our opening a tag there. <clears throat> and then we start in with our, um, our uh, image source. Okay, so uh, we're telling it to find home.gif and then we give a width and a height. Okay, so 19 pixels tall, 85 pixels wide. Uh, we provide our alt text because we want to uh, know that uh, this is the home button. And then after we close that up and then we just have our closing uh, anchor element tag right after that. All right. Um, so one of the main reasons that we use alt, uh, that the alt text, description text, is sometimes people with impaired vision use a, uh, what would they call a screen reader. Uh, it's just a piece of software that goes through and um, uh, audibly tells them what's on the page. And so by having that alt text there, they'll know that that's the, the button to uh, take them to the home, okay? 
Uh, also, some browsers, um, most of the current browsers, the current updates don't do this, but um, <clears throat> it's probably good practice to add this into your CSS uh, style sheet um, to get rid of the uh, border around an image. If you, if you have that image linked, um, you, you don't want to have a, because some browsers will automatically add just a default border around there uh, for the link. Uh, but we can just add this IMG <clears throat> um, border style to uh, set that to none within our CSS, and that will get rid of that uh, automatic border. Um, in some sites, <clears throat> maybe like por portfolio sites that you're working on, uh, you might want to have uh, what we call a thumbnail image, and that's just a clickable image uh, that when you click on it, it opens up a smaller, I mean, uh, opens up a larger version of that image. Okay, so um, this would be an example of how we would uh, set that up to make that clickable. Uh, first, we have our anchor. Um, we're linking to this big .jpg file. And then in our image source, we're using a small .jpg. So it's just a smaller version of that file. Uh, our alt text says country road. And then um, for that thumbnail one, we're using a width of 200 pixels and a height by 100. Uh, but when you click on that, it'll open up the full size JPEG, uh, whatever that might be, whether it's uh, you know a thousand some pixels wide, uh, it'll open up that image. Um, image optimization, okay, I talked about this. Uh, this is just that process <clears throat> of taking an image um, <clears throat> and getting it to the lowest file size that you can, but yet still uh, has some decent quality to where people know what it is. Uh, it doesn't look too pixelized, all right? Um, so by default, most photos uh, taken with digital cameras or even your, uh, your uh, iPhones or Android phones, um, most of the time those file sizes are pretty big as far as like the, the pixel size, um, the resolution. So <clears throat> we want to most of the time uh, optimize these so we can get that file size down and just because we don't want uh, the browser, um, sp you know, spending a lot of time trying to open up that file, uh, large file. <clears throat> so um, another good practice is you, you want to reduce the dimensions of whatever image you're using to the actual width and height of how you want that to be displayed on the web page. Okay, so for example, if you have a 100 or a 1000 by 1000 uh, image, okay, a square, uh, but we only want it to take up 200 pixels uh, of the width of our page, uh, we're going to reduce that size, the file size, um, we're actually going to shrink that file in one of our image editing tools down to 200 by 200 and then resaving that uh, because then we'll have maybe a, you know, 30K size file instead of a 300K size file. Uh, some of the image editing tools. Um, so we use uh, at the college, uh, we use Photoshop because uh, we have access to Photoshop. That's kind of the industry standard. Um, GIMP is another open source tool uh, that's available. And so it's free. And also the uh, Pixlr. Um, actually, I haven't tried this one, uh, but the book uh, suggests that. Uh, so there's an option there for that. Uh, but the ones that are most commonly used are GIMP and Photoshop. <clears throat> um, when we save our files, our image files, um, kind of standard practice is to use all lowercase. Uh, don't use any kind of punctuation symbols or spaces. Um, and we want the file extensions uh, to be .gif, so .gif. Uh, GIF or .jpg for JPEG. Uh, sometimes you'll see a JPEG uh, with the extension of .jpeg. Uh, that's okay. And then uh, .png files, uh, .png. Um, usually keep your <clears throat> file names short, uh, but yet it's kind of descriptive. Okay, so the example there, um, i1.gif, probably too short because you don't know what it is. Um, that next one there in my image with my dog on my birthday, dot GIF, <laughs> it's way too long. Um, so just give it something like dog B day, dot GIF. Okay, that's, that's about right. 
Um, so another practice, uh, kind of standard practice here is to organize all of your images into one image folder uh, in your uh, site directory. Okay, and so <clears throat> when you guys are doing your case studies uh, this week, uh, this is kind of how you're going to set them up. Um, you're going to have like that Pacific Trails uh, folder where you're keeping all of your HTML files and your CSS files. Um, <clears throat> but inside that folder, you're going to have uh, a separate folder called images where you're going to keep all of your uh, All of your GIFs and JPEGs and um, when we link to those uh, within the HTML, we have to uh, change a little bit there on that image source. Okay, so you'll notice that we have within the quotes images slash home.gif, right? So instead of just putting home.gif, because we need to tell the browser uh, first it needs to open up that images folder. And then once it's inside there, then it can find uh, that GIF file for us, right? So we're just um, adding that extra little bit of, uh, of a path there to tell it where to, where to find the file. Uh, the reason being, because then you can kind of keep your directories and everything more organized uh, by keeping all of that within just one images folder. Um, okay, so uh, some specific HTML5 uh, stuff here. Uh, figure and big caption elements. Um, a figure element uh, just contains a unit of content that's uh, self-contained, uh, like an image, all right? Um, so you can kind of think of this as like kind of a container uh, for your image, all right? So we uh, have a couple opening and closing tags here uh, that we use, uh, the figure, all right? And then the, the closing figure uh, tag there. Uh, within that, within those tags, then we have our image source, right? Just so same as like what we were doing. We have our alt text, uh, width and height, uh, and also we're adding a caption there. So you'll notice on um, the browser page there at the bottom right, uh, at the bottom of that photo of the lighthouse with the trees. There's a little caption that says uh, "Island Lighthouse built in 19 or 1870." Okay. So that's just a way to add a little bit of a, if you want to have a caption uh, on your photo, uh, you can use that big caption element uh, to do that. All right. Okay, um, so I'm gonna talk about a couple other little, uh, 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 these are kind of fun. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of these. Uh, you can Google uh, HTML5 elements and you can find a lot of these out there. Uh, so this one here that they give you an example of in the book, um, meter element, okay, it displays a visual gauge of a numeric value for something, all right? So uh, the code there, uh, we're using meter value, uh, giving it a minimum and a maximum, and uh, you can see how that looks then on the, the browser, all right? So it's just putting it in kind of a graph format for you. Um, we won't really use these in the case study, but uh, just just to know you're there, uh, that just so you know that they're there. Um, this one's a progress element. <clears throat> Again, uh, we use progress value equals. Uh, we set the values, and what it does is it puts a little uh, meter uh, there, a little bar. Um, okay, so these we will use uh, background image properties. Okay, um, so usually we want to have some sort of a background, whether it's a, a color or in this case, we're actually using a, uh, we're using some images. Okay, um, the example there on the left, uh, the image that we're using is that really um, long and um, you know, it's not very high uh, image there with the, the, bl the blue and the, the yellow. And then the one on the right, we're using that kind of a tiled uh, look. All right, so um, by default, all the background images that you use will, uh, the browser will repeat those, okay? Um, and so when we're setting these up within our page, uh, usually we'll, we'll set these up in the body element um, the body style. Uh, we'll have background hyphen image colon. 
uh, space URL, and then within our uh, uh, parentheses there, background one dot uh, GIF. Okay, so um, that URL that is telling us uh, what file uh, that the browser needs to pull up to load as the background image. All right. And so you can see there the examples of how it would tile those uh, specific images uh, on the background. And we'll, we'll do examples of these in the coding um, so you'll get a little bit of better feel for, for how this works. Um, and so we can make these different images if we're gonna use them in the background uh, repeat in different ways. Um, we can repeat on the, the Y axis. Okay, so that's the that, uh, vertical axis there on the top examples. And the middle one there, uh, we're repeating on the X axis or the horizontal axis. Um, and then uh, no repeat, uh, we can just set that if we don't want the images to repeat at all. Uh, so for example, if you have like a, maybe a really large uh, background image, you only want it on there one time, uh, we would set uh, the background to no repeat. Okay, so this is how we would um, code this. All right, so here we're putting just a little bit of a background. It's kind of a, uses maybe like a, a decorative bullet um, in one of our H2 uh, header elements. Uh, we're gonna give it a background color. So that D5EDB3 hexadecimal value. Uh, we're giving the text color of the value there. We've got our font info. Um, adding some padding to the left. And then, um, then we get down to our background, uh, the background image, colon space URL. We're telling it to load that trillion bullet dot, uh, GIF. And then we're going to tell it for background hyphen repeat. Uh, we don't want it to repeat because uh, we just want it one time there as kind of a bullet image. So uh, we set that to no repeat. Uh, sometimes we can we can even use uh, multiple background images. Okay, so this is how we would do that. So this is within the body uh, style. Uh, we have our background color, our text color, um, and then we're setting up a, uh, a gradient. Okay, so it goes from kind of that light green at the top to a little bit darker green at the bottom. Okay, so right now we're looking at the basically the whole background of the web page there. Okay, so we're, we're dealing with the body. Um, and then we're also telling it um, background, uh, we're setting up a separate image for just background. So we just use background colon, and then we're giving it trillium foot dot gif. Um, that's that little leaf there, it's the bottom right. Okay, so in the style sheet here, we're telling it no repeat, uh, we want it on the bottom right side of the background. And then um, again, we're adding in that uh, Trillium gradient uh, PNG uh, there to add in that, that transparent background. Okay, so this gets a little more complicated, um, but again, we'll do, we'll do this and we'll do a coding example of this. Uh, so once you do it, uh, when you actually code it in, uh, you'll probably get a little bit better understanding how to do that. A um, little bit, some more info on images. Let's, we're gonna talk about image maps, um, our favorites icon, um, sprites, and we'll talk about some other uh, accessibility and guidelines. Okay, so an image map. Uh, what this is, it's a map element and you use it usually to just make a certain section of a photo or a graphic element uh, clickable, okay? Um, so it, we're defining a certain space uh, on the image that um, when you hover over it and click on it, it's gonna take you somewhere, All right? <clears throat> so we can set it up as uh, either a circle, a uh, polygon, or most commonly we'll just set it up as a rectangle, All right? So you can see there is on the example on the right, um, we're making that uh, little boat or uh, whatever that is, the sh uh, uh, ship there uh, as a clickable area, All right? And so then the code to do this, um, so this is within the HTML, okay? We're not in the CSS, we're in the HTML. Uh, we set up a map 
<clears throat> and we name it boat, uh, we give it an ID, uh, we can just use boat again. Um, and then we use area href equals, and so we're telling you that area that we're mapping out is gonna take you to that URL. Uh, we tell it what shape we want, we're using a rectangle, <clears throat> and then we're using our coordinates, okay? So we're um, setting it, so we're giving it um, certain values here. Um, we're telling it uh, to kind of pinpoint these different spots uh, on that graphic. All right, so, and so those, those four different coordinates are giving us the, uh, the outline of that rectangle. Um, and then right after, then we have our closing tag for the map. And then right after that, then we have our standard uh, image source uh, tag uh, element to uh, load that, that file. Okay, so um, used to use this quite a bit. Uh, this was pretty common. Um, don't see this used a whole lot anymore in web design. Um, but uh, there, there might be some cases where you'd want to use it. So um, there, get this in here just so you can practice with that. Um, so your favorites icon, uh, this is that little icon that you'll usually see in your browser. Um, it's kind of on the left side of the URL. Um, so it's usually just that's a little square image. Um, it's named uh, favicon.ico. Um, Okay, and you can usually set this up. Uh, you can create like a, for example, like K-State, we have a little uh, PowerCat uh, set up. All right, um, and so we can configure this and um, we do this in the head section of our, uh, of our HTML document. So just like we do with the style sheet, we do a link REL, except we're telling it uh, this one's an icon. Uh, then we have to link to that icon file and the other thing you put in here uh, is type, and the standard is image uh, slash x hyphen icon. And I can, we'll do some examples of this on how to create some of these uh, when we do the, the hands-on practice activities. Uh, the last, another thing here, uh, sprites. Uh, sprites, just an image file that contains multiple versions of the, the same graphic. Uh, but what, what we do is um, kind of move that image uh, within the space of the browser. And it gives that kind of a uh, appearance of a rollover. So like when you hover over something, uh, maybe an image turns from light to dark. Okay, so we do that just by having one graphic that has a light version of the, uh, the image and then a light version of the image. And we're just telling the browser to uh, move that image in space. So we'll do some examples of that as well. <clears throat> um, okay, so these are just some examples of uh, graphic applications that you can use to create photos, uh, create graphics. Um, I need to update my list here. We don't have fireworks anymore. Uh, but GIMP, uh, Photoshop, um, uh, Google Picasa. Uh, so those are all ones where you can, uh, uh, software applications that you can use. Uh, you can download graphics from a lot of different free sites. Um, one thing you want to make sh sure that you're not uh, doing any kind of copyright infringement. Um, you can take your own digital photos, scan your own photos, um, you can have your own drawings. Okay, so um, I'll do some, when we get into the hands-on stuff, I'll show you guys some resources that you can use for, for free graphics. Uh, there's quite a few out there. Uh, and then again, just some guidelines to remember um, the, the, the file size, okay? You wanna try to get that kind of sweet spot where the file's not too big yet. Um, it still has a pretty good quality. Um, resolution, you know, standard is 72 um, DPI. That's kind of the resolution that we use for digital. Um, and then the, just the dimensions. Um, make sure you're using the right dimension. So that your photo isn't like all squished or uh, um, uh, kind of pulled and kind of weird looking proportions. 
Um, okay, so images. So again, uh, just some tips here. Don't rely on color alone. Okay, so because some people might have some visual uh, vision problems, um, you want to include text equivalent for all non-text. So kind of like what we talked about with the the nav navigation elements. If you're using images for those, you want to have text links for those as well. A um, couple of the final things here, uh, rounded corners. Uh, so we can do some rounded corners with CSS. Um, so that's an example there. Uh, we just put in the style border hyphen radius. And for this example, we're doing 15 pixels. So it gives it a 15 pixel rounded edge there on that border. Okay, so these are some examples of those. Uh, we can even do different types of, uh, or different values for the pixels on like the top, right, bottom, and left. <clears throat> um, box shadow, so we can add kind of a shadow to, um, like for example, we um, last week we set up a div for that uh, wrapper, uh, we called it a uh, wrapper, okay? So we had that um, ID selector set up in our CSS. Uh, we could add a shadow to that um, to give it kind of a sense of depth. All right, so it's adding like a five pixel shadow on the uh, the right and the, the bottom sides there. Um, okay, trying to get through these. I know we're almost running out of time. I'll try to go through these kind of quick. Um, <clears throat> opacity, okay, so we can uh, set opacities uh, in our style sheets. Okay, so this example, we're doing uh, an H1. Right, so where it says fall nature hikes, um, we have that white box and we are setting the opacity to 0.6, which is kind of like 60%. Um, some of our other color values we can do in uh, CSS and HTML5, uh, we can add a, a fourth value um, to include that alpha transparency, okay, so that to make it kind of see-through. Right, so this example, that fall nature hikes, that H1 um, uh, element there in our, our uh, selector, uh, in our style. Okay, you can see we add on the second line there, color uh, colon RGBA. And that fourth value is telling it to use a 0.7 uh, alpha transparency. All right, so 70% of that uh, text is going to shine through and then 30% um, of it will be kind of knocked out to give it a little bit of an opacity look. Um, okay, another one, uh, we can use a HLS, uh, HSLA color uh, scheme. So with that one, we're working with hue, saturation, light, and alpha. Uh, honestly, I don't use this one really ever, um, but Again, it's just another uh, tool for you to be able to use. Uh, another thing here, uh, gradients. Okay, so that's when we're going from a light value to a dark value or vice versa. Uh, so the gradient is just that smooth blending of shades from one color to another. Uh, we can do it either linear, which is kind of a straight line, or we can do a radial, which kind of starts in the center and then circles out from the center. All right, so this example here, you can notice on the background of that, uh, we start with kind of that white color at the very top of the background and that kind of fades to that bluish color. Uh, to do that, we just use a background um, image and then we tell it instead of actually loading an image, we're just going to use a linear gradient. And then we just give it the two values there, uh, the top value and then the, the bottom value. So white and then that kind of uh, off blue color. Okay, that's it. So again, sorry, I said there was quite a bit of information in chapter four, so I had to kind of go a little quick there at the end to get through all of it. Um, so uh, like I said, what we'll do uh, Friday, we'll start in on the hands-on practice activities and we'll, we'll get through probably about half of those and then we'll finish those up uh, next Monday. Uh, we'll finish the rest of them in chapter four and then the rest of next week, uh, we'll cover the info that's in chapter five, um, but there's no uh, 
coding uh, parts to chapter five. All right. Okay, so go ahead and review that chapter in your book. Um, kind of read through it, look at all the examples. Um, also, put the, I'll put these slides up in Canvas um, later today as well. And uh, that way you'll have maybe a little bit of better um, uh, idea of what we're going to be doing when we do the coding. Okay. All right, that's all I got today. So everybody have a good day and we'll see you on uh, Friday. Bye.